Hello and welcome to lesson 19 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be focusing on conditional probability. Okay, so I would like you to have some knowledge of tree diagram probabilities and the ability to find the probability of um, getting two reds out of a bag of marbles which have red and blue marbles where there are 10 red and 7 blue, that sort of type of question finding the chance of two events happening in succession when the second event depends on the first event. So if I pick a red out first, then the chance I'll pick a red out second will change because I have fewer reds and fewer marbles in total. OK, so you need to have some grounding in, in that skill. OK, that's in the GC course. And so it's it's a requisite skill to have for this lesson here. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on a pair of keywords, and those keywords are given that. Okay, this is new to you and extends your understanding of probability. Essentially, um, the following two probabilities contain the essence of that word. So, um, the first probability: what is the chance that I sleep well tomorrow? Okay, and secondly, what is the chance that I sleep well tomorrow given that I go for a long run? Okay. The two answers will be different of those two probabilities because you are given extra information in the second one, which will alter the answer. If you're given an extra condition, that changes the probability. So that given that, given that I go for a long run, changes things. OK, and there is a formula involved in this which will help in more complex questions, which I will introduce after the first example. OK. So I'll do two examples and two your turns in this lesson. OK, by the way, I probably go into far too much detail here, considering it's not that large a part of the ADMATH syllabus, but it's tough to stop when you're having so much fun. OK, I love conditional probability and I love the sort of development of this. So let's look at the first question I've got here. We have red and blue marbles in a bag in the ratio two to three. I take two out in succession without replacement. So that that without replacement is key. OK, because, as I've said before, if you don't replace the marble, then taking one out will change the probabilities as you go along. The probability that both marbles are red is one seventh. So the probability of getting red then red is one out of seven. Question A, what is the probability that the second was red given that the first was red? So we, we have a given that question here. So that's dealing with conditional probability. Given some extra information, what's the probability the second marble was red given that the first was red? So let's, let's focus on that. OK, this is a classic tree diagram problem with a twist in that you don't know how many marbles there are, so you can't assign probabilities for all the branches. You can assign them for the first branches because you know the ratio of red to blue, but you don't know whether there are two red and three blue, or whether there are four red and six blue, or whether there are 20 red and 30 blue. You don't know that. So you cannot assign a probability for the second event once the first event has happened because you don't know how many reds are left and how many there are in total left. OK, so let's let's write down what we do know. OK, so let's draw out our tree diagram and start working things out. So when I take a marble out, I can either pick out a red or a blue. OK, so either a red or a blue marble is the first marble. Then I can either pick out a red or a blue. A red or a blue. So there are four possible options. Red, then red, red, then blue, blue, then red or blue then blue. OK, so those are the four different possible options. I know the probability of the top event, red then red. It's given to me as one out of seven. Okay. I also know the probabilities that will go for this, the first two branches, OK, the first event, either red or blue, because I'm given the ratio that there are originally in the bag. So I know the chance of getting a red is two out of five. Since two reds for every three blue, there are five parts in total. Two out of the five parts are red, three out of the five parts are blue. So I can fill in the probabilities for those first two branches. 
And I can fill in, as I said, the probability of getting red then red is one seventh. So this probability, which I'm going to call probability of red one and red two, is one out of seven. Okay. Now, what I want to find in the first question is what's the probability that the second was red given that the first was red? So really what I'm looking for is this probability here. The probability of that specific branch, the specific branch that comes from having already picked red because I'm given that fact. I am here and I want to find the probability of going down this branch once I am at this point, at this fork. OK, so let's call that X. And this is basically, let's solve for X. Let's create an equation and solve. OK, we know with our tree diagram probability that we multiply along the branches to get the probability of the result. So the probability of red one and red two is two fifths times x equals one seventh. So let's write that down. Two fifths multiplied by x equals one seventh. So there we go. There's our equation. And therefore I can solve that. I can divide both sides by two fifths. So x is equal to one seventh times two divided by two fifths or one seventh times the reciprocal five over two, which gives me five over 14. So I know the probability of getting the second one red once the first one is red is five out of 14. So there's the answer to the first problem, part A. OK. Now, part B. How many marbles did I have in the bag at the start? Well, just because X is five fourteenths doesn't mean that there were five reds after the first pick and there were 14 in total after the first one's picked out. It might be true that that, but it might be that there were 50 reds and 140 in total. OK, you don't know. So let's do some algebra and solve to find how many marbles I had at the start. So let's call that n. So let n be the number of marbles I had at the start. So we're solving to find n. If I have n marbles at the start, then two fifths of them will be red. Okay. So two fifths n are red, and three fifths n are blue. After I've taken one out, after I've taken one red out, I know that there are two fifths n minus one reds and n minus one in total. OK. So at this point here where I have picked one red out already, I now have two fifths n minus one red marbles and I have n minus one marbles in the bag. So I know that two fifths n minus one out of n minus one is equal to five fourteenths. Because this is here how many reds there are. If there were n marbles at the start, then there are two fifths n red marbles at the start. After I've taken one red out, there are two fifths n take away one red marbles and there are n minus one marbles in total. So that is the expression which should equal 5 fourteenths. And I simply solve that fraction. To solve, when I have fraction equal to a fraction, I prefer multiplying both sides by both denominators. So I multiply both sides by 14 and by n minus 1 at the same time. So that gives me the following line. If I multiply by 14, the left side becomes 14 lots of 2 fifths n minus 1. And if I multiply by n minus one, I get five lots of n minus one on the right. Because on the right hand side of the equation, if I multiply by 14, that that is the inverse of divide by 14. So the divide by 14 is eliminated and I'm multiplying by n minus one. So I get the times by n minus one on the right. Then expand. So I get 28 fifths n minus 14 equals five n minus five. Solve, take away five n from both sides. You get three fifths n left 
add 14 to bedside equals 9. Then divide by 3 fifths, you get 15. So n equals 15. So there were 15 marbles at the start in the bag. Okay? And if we want to check, if there were 15 marbles at the start, two fifths of them were red. Okay? So two fifths of 15 is six, three fifths of 15 is nine. So we had six reds to start, nine blues to start. So it was six out of 15 to start there. And then once I take one out, it's now five out of 14 there, which makes sense. And six fifteenths times five fourteenths is one seventh. So that works. Okay. Right. Have a go at this following question, which is similar. Here you have red to blue in the ratio four to seven. So red to blue in the ratio four to seven. Okay, so red marbles and blue marbles are in a bag in the ratio four to seven. I take two out in succession. Okay, so you take two out in succession, two taken out, no replacement. Two taken out, no replacement. Probability red one and red two. So the probability both are red is equal to four out of 33. So the same two questions. What is the probability the second was red given, given that the first was red? Okay, so answer that first. Then, once you've answered that, Part B, how many marbles were there at the start? Okay, how many marbles were there at the start? So pause the video, have a go at those two questions. Think about how we answered the first one, the worked example, okay? And then I'll go through the answers. So, answers. First one, um, if you have answered it correctly, firstly, a good, nice tree diagram would be good. Red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. So we've got four out of 11, so the chance the first one is red. We want to find the chance the second one is red, given the first one was red. And we know the probability of red and red is four out of 33. So we simply know that 4 elevenths times x is 4 out of 33. So x is equal to a third if you solve that. Okay, so the probability of getting the second one red, given that the first one was red, is 1 out of 3, is 1 third. And part b, here we know that there are n in total, let's say, so 4 elevenths of n is the number of reds there are in total. If we subtract one from that, we have the number of reds after we've picked out one red. That out of n minus one, which is the number of marbles there are in total after we've picked one red out, should be equal to one third. And we solve that, and if you solve that correctly, you should get n is 22. If you got that right, well done. Superb. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a really important result from that problem. Okay. And here is the important result. It's a formula for conditional probability that is very useful. Now, if we start a an experiment and either A happens or A doesn't happen. Let's call A happening A and A not happening A dash. So either A happens or A doesn't happen. And then event two, following that, 
I, I check on the result of B and either B happens or B doesn't happen, okay? If I want to find the probability of A and B happening, okay, so this probability here, probability A and B happening, I multiply the, the probabilities along the branches. A lot of people would put here that this is the probability of B. This branch here is the probability of B, but it is not. This branch here is the probability that B happens given that A has happened, which may or may not be the same as the probability that B will happen independently of A, because A might affect B. In the previous example, depending on the first event, the second event is affected because you'll have fewer marbles. But you might have a question here such as, um, what's the chance that I'm late for my bus given that my alarm went off or it failed to go off. If my alarm went off, that will affect whether I'm capable of getting to my bus on time. If my alarm failed to, to go off, I'm probably less likely to make my bus on time. Okay, so event A there would be the alarm going off or not going off, that would be A dash. And event B would be getting to my bus on time, so B dash would, not, would be missing my bus. OK, so this branch here, as I've said, is the probability that B happens given that you know A has happened because you are here and so A has happened. So really, we now know how to work out the probability of A and B. Using our tree diagram knowledge, probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A has happened. And I'm going to introduce a new symbol here. When you use the given that, you can write, instead of given that, you can write a line. You can use different colours if you want. You don't need different colours, but I'm just going to use different colours just to, just to accentuate it. That line there means given that. So probability of A and B happening is the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has happened. So just multiplying along the branches. So. If we rearrange this, it creates the following equation. The probability of B given that A has happened is equal to the probability of A and B happening divided by the probability of A. Okay. So if you want to find the conditional probability, you can find the probability of both of those things happening and divide it by the probability of the second thing happening. And you will find the result. And that's what we're going to use in this next problem. OK, so make a note of that formula there. OK, here's the next problem. There's a 30% chance of rain tomorrow. If it rains, Melchester Rovers, the famous team, have a 25% chance of a win. Otherwise, they have a 60% chance. So they're very much affected by the rain. They don't like playing the rain. OK, so if it rains, their chance of a win is severely reduced. OK, find the probability that it rains given that they won. Now, this is a bit strange because you think, well, the, the rain or not rain happens first, then it's either they win or, or don't win. OK, but here I'm asking you, what's the chance it rains given that you know that they won? OK, the best way of doing this first thinking what's the formula and then using a tree diagram to try and find out what you want to find out to use that formula okay the formula says probability of rain i'm going to use r for rain given win is equal to probability of rain and win divided by the probability of the second one here which is win so I need to find the probability of it raining and winning, and they win. And I need to find the probability that they win. And if I divide them, I've got my answer. OK, so I start now working on my tree diagram. So my tree diagram, so it's either rains or it doesn't rain. And they either win or they don't win. OK, so four options there. Let's fill in some of the probabilities. There's a 30% chance of rain tomorrow. 
Okay, so 30% chance of rain, so 0.3 and 0.7 so for rain and not rain. If it rains, Melchester Rovers have a 25% chance of a win. So that probability there is 0.25 and that probability there is 0.75. Otherwise, they have a 60% chance okay, of winning. So 0.6 and 0.4. Multiplying along the branches, I get 0.075 for rain and win, 0.225 for rain and not win, 0.42 for rain, not rain and win, and 0.28 for not rain and not win. Okay, so those are the different options and they will add up to one because all the probabilities will add up to one. Those are the, all the possible options. So all I need to do now is substitute the values I want into the formula and I get the value of probability of rain given that they won. So the probability that they it rained and they won is this one. So that gets substituted in there, 0 0.075 divided by the probability they win. Now the probability they win, well, there's a 7.5% chance that they won and it rained, and there's a 42% chance that they won and it didn't rain. So there's a 49.5% chance that they won. Okay, so if we add those two probabilities together, these two here, add them together, we get the chance of, it, of them winning, which is 0 0.495. So that is the probability of them winning. And if we divide those two, we get the probability of, them, of it raining given that they won, which is five out of 33. So that is the final answer, okay? Thinking of it logically, the reason why it's 0 0.075 out of 0 0.495 is because you're told that they won. You're given that they won. So you're not really thinking of all the different possible options. You're thinking of just the options where they won, which is that 7.5% and that 42%. So we're not thinking out of the all 100%. We're thinking out of just the 49.5% of the time. So that's why we're out of 49.5% because we're given that we're talking just out of those options and the chance that they it rained well out of those 49 and a half percent of the time seven and a half percent of those was it raining so it's seven and a half percent out of 49 and a half percent so that's thinking about it logically okay i want you to have a go at this following question which is a similar question so here it is so there's a 20% chance that I will lie in tomorrow. Okay. If I lie in, apologies for my writing, by the way. If I lie in, there's a 50% chance I eat breakfast. If I don't, so otherwise, there's a 90% chance I eat breakfast, okay? By the way, you should always eat breakfast, most important meal of the day. I want you to find the probability that I lie in given that 50% I did not eat breakfast. Okay, so find that probability of pause, have a go at that question, and then I'll go through the answer. Okay, so the answer, I'm going to start using L for lion, L dash for not lion. So L, either I lion or I don't lion. And then I either eat breakfast, B, or I don't eat breakfast. Okay, so here are the branches of my tree diagram. The probabilities on the branches are 0.2 for a lion, 0.8 for not lion. Breakfast, 0.5 and 0.5 
if I do lie in and 0.9 and 0.1 if I don't lie if I don't lie in. So the probabilities along the branches are 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.72, and 0.08. What you want is you want so the question is probability of lie in given that not b. So that using the formula is probability of lie in and not be, so lie in and not breakfast, divided by the probability of get not having breakfast, okay? Not having breakfast are these two. So that's 18% of the time I'm not gonna have breakfast. And lie in and not breakfast is 0.1. So it's 0.1 out of 0.18, so the answer is five ninths. Superb job if you got that right. Okay. As I said at the start, I've gone in an enormous amount of detail in this, but um, if you've understood it all and enjoyed it, I'm very impressed. Okay. Um, what you should do now, if you want more practice on this, is do the first exercise in chapter 10 from this textbook. So exercise. 10.1. Develop your probability knowledge and then the next lesson we're going to go into things like things about combinatorics, so um, permutations, combinations, which is a beautiful topic and which flummoxes lots of people, but I love it. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Go away and practice and come back for the next one. Enjoy. <laughs>